his wife. The movie star, the professor and Mary Ann, here on Gilligan's Island. Oh, look, little Miss Cinnamon is too good to help us out. She's over there painting her dainty little nails. Newsflash, Cinnamon, there's nobody here but us, and we really don't care what you look like. So who are you trying to impress? Actually, guys, I was going to use the nail polish to paint a help sign so we could get off the stinking island. The professor gave me the idea. So, thanks for having faith in me. Yeah, right. I don't believe you'd waste nail polish to do anything productive. Now, wait, that's not fair. We should have given her a chance to explain herself before jumping to conclusions. Thanks. You're actually being nice to me? Well, it's like the professor said. Remember the Bible verse? Therefore, it run thus, not with uncertainty. Well, if we're ever going to get off this stinking island, we're going to have to learn how to understand each other. So if what you're saying is true, I'm in. I'll help you out. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, right. I'm not buying any of this. You spent the last four weeks trying to make mascara out of tree bark. Why do you care all of a sudden? Well, it's like you said, if we don't get off this island, who are we going to try to impress anyway? Come on, Cinnamon. I'll help. Wait, wait, wait. I'll come too. I don't think that bottle is going to be enough to do the job. Maybe we can concoct something out of the flowers or something. Maybe like paint. Man, I should have watched more Discovery Channel. All righty. Welcome back to the... We're in the home stretch here of the Amazing Race. And for those who are just tuning in here, what we've been talking about for the several weeks is how to be successful at the race of life, the race that every one of us has to go through. And what we agreed upon in the beginning is that the majority of us are just kind of running and allowing life to take it to us. And we said in this series, we're going to take back control, we're going to take it to life. No more being out of control, no more having uh, priorities, but them always getting crowded out. We're going to take control and we are going to try to be successful and effective. And what we talked about over the past few weeks is here's how we've been breaking it down. The first three weeks we looked at how to be effective at an individual level, meaning inside. Okay, and those who are familiar with what we've been talking about is, is a book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People written by a man named Stephen Covey that's kind of been like driving us through here. We've been taking the principles from it. So what we've seen is that in order to take control of my life, I have to begin inside. As the Lord told us, that first cleanse the inside of the cup and dish, that the outside may be clean as well. So we looked at how do I have to take control of my life and I can no longer be tossed to and fro by the winds and the busyness and etc, etc, etc. We do that by being proactive, by not letting life take it to me, by taking it to life. We do that by setting a goal with the end, beginning with the end in mind. Before I leave my house and get in the car, figure out where it is I want my car to end up. We talked about that in week two. And then we talked about how to prioritize with the big rocks first, putting first things first. And then, well, we, once we had that in order, then we could begin to now relate to others on the outside. And as we started to talk about last week, is now that I got this in order, I can begin to relate properly here. But as long as this is out of order, no matter what I do here, it's always going to be dysfunctional. Okay? So we talked last week about thinking win-win, and what we agreed last week is that we do not live in a zero-sum, you know, kind of a world, but we live in a world where God makes all things work together for good for those who love Him. That means if I love Him, and you love Him, and you and I disagree, that God can make a solution that's good for you and good for me. That rhymes. See that? If we disagree, good for you, good for me. I made a rhyme. And that if I have a, a situation at work, or a situation uh, at home, whatever it is, there's a win-win situation because God makes all things work together for good to those who love Him. Because God is perfect. And it's never that God would do something good for you and it would be bad for me. Okay, when God acts, it can be good for both of us. Now this week, we're going to look at the fifth habit. And the fifth habit is seeking first to understand. But before we look at the fifth habit, we're going to take a little trip to the office of the optometrist.
You're good. Hi, Dr. Peter. How are you? How's it going? Um, good. Did you get an iPhone? It's life changing. I actually am more patient now because nothing bothers me. When when things are delayed, I just pull out the iPhone and everything's great. Okay, Dr. Peter, I'm here because I. Would you just let me finish no. what I'm doing? All right? I'm sending a text. Just back off. It's great. It's great. Yeah, what's the problem? Okay, my eyes really hurt, and they've been hurting for like a month now. Everything okay, wait, I, I, know, I know what's going on. Have you broken a bone in the past two years? No. Okay, okay. What I recommend to all my patients is if you have eye problems, make sure that you go to your mother first. And you know when they do that thing where they put the shirt over your eye in Unfuch? You know that? The, like the blowing in your eye? It works like a charm. Did you do that? Um, no. I don't know. I'm like hoping maybe you can like see what's wrong and prescribe something. You know, I had the same problem. I was like you once. And these glasses, they did the charm. I think that if you wore these, everything should be fine. Now just take those. Okay. Just tell me how everything is going. Check back in three years and everything should be fine. Um, I like can't really see anything right now. I was an orthopedic surgeon in Egypt. Okay? Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Okay. Everything fine? Yeah. It worked for me, it's going to work okay. for you. Thanks. Thanks, yeah. Thanks, Dr. Uh, well, what about the copay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now give him a big hand. Give him a big hand. Give him a bigger hand than that. Thank you, guys. Believe it or not, they just came up with that script on the spot, if you can imagine that. A well thought out one like that. Very good. Let me ask you a question. Samantha here, who played the role of the patient. What are the chances that she recommends this doctor to anyone? What are the chances that she goes and fills out a customer survey satisfaction and gives this guy a 10, a perfect 10? Any chance? No. Why? Because this doctor broke the primary rule of being a doctor, and it's a rule of life. And the rule is that one must diagnose properly before being able to prescribe effectively. Agree? This doctor, no matter what he was in Egypt, gave a prescription, he gave a prescription which he thought would solve the problem. But the problem was he didn't realize what actually her problem was. He didn't take the time to diagnose it properly. He just assumed that she probably has the same eye problem I have. Since these glasses work for me, they must work for her as well. We oftentimes do the same thing in life. Today we're going to read some verses from one of my favorite books in the Bible, and it's one of the books that most people don't know much about, which is the book of the Wisdom of Sirach. Okay? And it's one of the deuterocanonical books, which doesn't appear in, the, the, in most Bibles, but it's one of the best books. It's like Proverbs. It's got little pieces of wisdom, but somehow it's easier to understand and seems more practical. We'll read some verses from it. Sirach 11, verse 7 and 8. Blame not before thou hast examined the truth. The problem with the Deuterocanonical is only Old English. They don't have a New English one, sorry. Blame not before thou hast examined the truth. Understand first and then rebuke. Answer not before thou hast heard the cause, neither interrupt men in the midst of their talk. What is Sirach telling us right here? He's telling to this wonderful doctor that before you give a pair of glasses, listen to see what the problem is. Does this apply to us? Throughout today, I'm going to give many examples. Husband, wife, mother, son, daughter, friends, co like, I'll give many examples. A child comes to his mother, and he looks kind of, and moms can tell, right? Moms can tell. Moms can tell when something just ain't right. So the son's just kind of, so mom says, what's wrong, sweetie? He says, nothing. You know how kids are, nothing. 
No, sweetie, something's bothering you. What happened? And the kid says, well, you know, just, uh, I don't really like school that much anymore. You know, a new year just started. I don't really like, I don't like fourth grade. And then the mom, what? You don't like fourth grade? How could you not like fourth grade? Fourth grade is actually going to be the best year for you because you're going to learn this and you're going to learn that. And after all that we've done to put you, to get you into a good school like this, no, you have to like fourth grade and you have to work harder and be like your sister. See how she has a very positive attitude even though she's going through a hard time? What are the chances that this child tomorrow comes back to the mom when he's feeling something's bothering him? What did this mom do? What this mom did is exactly what we oftentimes do. We assume that your problem, I assume that your problem is exactly like mine. And I remember when I was in fourth grade, and I remember when I struggled with school, the reason was is because I was just lazy and I didn't want to try hard. So when you come and tell me that you're struggling with school, I automatically give you the glasses. These are the glasses that work for me, and these are the glasses that, that I put on. Try harder. That's the solution. You're lazy? Try harder. And I give you these glasses. And you walk out like this poor lady walked out of the doctor's office very frustrated because not only did you not get your problem solved, but now you feel like no one even can understand your problem. That's why. Habit number five that we're going to talk about today. Believe me, I do not consider myself a relationship expert by any means. Okay? Me, even the way I was like programmed by God, I actually think I'm very bad at relationships. But I've learned a lot, especially through the priesthood, as I, some, usually against my will, am forced to deal with lots and lots of people. Even though I may be antisocial inside, my job requires me to deal with all kinds of people. Young, old, uh, open-minded, closed-minded, understand, not understand. The most important principle, as I'm going to tell you today, in dealing with people, all kinds of people, no matter who they are, it's seeking to understand first and be understood second. Seek first to understand and then be understood. This applies at work when you're dealing with your boss or your unders. This applies at home, definitely applies in marriage, 100%, 200%. It applies with children. It applies with parents. It applies with every single person that you meet. It applies to the grumpy guy that you ran into in the parking lot today. That scratched your car. That, that was rude. That was in the checkout. Seven or less and he's got ten. It's clear. Seek to understand first and be understood second. Look at it from this perspective. Here's what we're, we're going to talk about today. Why it's so important. What causes frustration in life? It's usually not events, it's relationships. Like, yes, there are catastrophes and disasters that happen, but these are not what causes the ongoing frustrations. What causes ongoing frustrations is relationships, is dealing with people and whatever. Well, what is the majority of the cause in any relationship conflict? easy. It's two people don't understand each other. It's not that one is bad and one is good. Your husband, your wife, she's good, he's good. Your kid's good, your parents good. The guy in the church, everyone's good. The ten item person in the seven item line is a good person. But the problem is, is we're not understanding each other. So if we want to lead effective lives, if we want to run our race and be successful, we must address this issue of relationships because it is the most important. It's the most important thing that deals with the quality of your life. Okay? It's the most important factor and what determines not what I get done but on the end of the day the smile on my face and the smile in my heart is my ability to understand and be understood. Let's take a step back. When it comes to communication there's four ways you communicate. There's four ways that communication happens between me and you. There's writing, and there's reading, there's talking, and there's listening. 
Okay, those are the four ways for me to communicate information to you. Either I say it with my mouth and you hear it with your ear, or I write it down on a screen or on a paper and you read it. Reading, writing, talking, listening. Think about how much time you have spent in your life learning how to read. And how many years of school you went to to learn how to read properly and to read the right way. Same thing with writing, classes, okay, and, and we, get, we get papers and we get greater in how we write. Same thing with speaking. There's seminars and things and, 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 we, and there's classes that we take how to speak effectively. But when it comes to listening, what in the world kind of training do we have? We know how to read, we know how to write, we know how to speak, but listening is just one of those that as the expression goes in Arabic, bil baraka. Means like, with blessing, means like, I don't know how to translate bil baraka. Means like, good luck to you buddy. Yeah. Like, eh, give it your best shot. Give it the old college try. Did anyone ever teach you how to listen effectively? Answered, no. And when I say listen effectively, let me tell you what I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about those self-help books or seminars or those techniques, the techniques that tell you to just, you know, uh, what's it called? Like when someone talks and you just repeat what they say back to them. Is this microphone cutting out? It's cutting. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Is it cutting in and out? Okay. Sometimes. Let me just go. This one better? Is this better? Okay. When I'm talking about how to listen, I'm not talking about that I'm saying stuff and you say, yes, I see that's how you feel. And you're just repeating back whatever I say, I see that you are angry today. I see that you would like to kill me today. These techniques that I'm going to call them, okay, which are, are superficial if they're not based on something deeper, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking here about just uh, rephrasing what the person says equals listening. I'm talking about deep understanding. Usually, when I say the word communication, you think of talking and you think we need to communicate more means we need to talk more well, I'm here to tell you I think the exact opposite is true that we need to communicate more means we need to listen more we need to communicate better means we need to listen better trust me if you want to change the quality of your life quickly and dramatically understand this principle and apply this principle and you'll see a big difference because nothing affects your happiness joy peace whatever your quality of life more than your relationships and your ability to communicate freely and openly in those relationships most of us like I said when we're communicating with each other and when we're in a conversation either you're talking or I'm talking and usually okay so when I'm talking I'm not listening there's 50% of the conversation I'm not listening and then when you're talking what am I usually doing is thinking of what I'm going to say as soon as you finish talking so if I spend the majority of the time I talk 50% and the majority of the time you talk I'm actually just thinking of what I'm going to say next where does the listening and the understanding come into you come talk to me and you say Abuna I got this problem this and this is a problem in my life and I shoot back at you say okay no problem I know exactly how you feel this happened to me when I was a kid do A, B, C and D next how do you feel? You got a problem with your parents? No problem. I had a problem with my parents. This is what I did. This solved the problem. Next. What other problems you got? Give me more problems. How do you feel? How do you feel? 
Especially if you add in there, I waited an hour to get to the... If I waited outside your office for an hour, I came in and told you I had this and this problem, and you just said, yeah, how do you feel? You feel frustrated? You feel like, ah. If this is something deep inside you, you feel like almost... If everyone around you is treating you that way, you feel choked. Understanding is the air which allows us to breathe oftentimes in life. And we feel like no one understands me. He doesn't understand. Uh, he, uh, you feel trapped. And no one knows what I'm going through. No one knows what I'm talking about. Sirach, chapter 6, verse 33. If thou love to hear, thou shalt receive understanding. Listen to that one again. Thou meaning you. If you love to hear, you shall receive understanding. If you bow your ear, you shall be wise. How many of us, someone comes to us, tells us something, we respond back with our set of glasses, they get frustrated and we say, hey, just don't get it. I'll tell you a typical example. Typical example. And I heard these words. Father comes. Man, I just don't understand my kid. He doesn't listen to anything I tell him. I say, what? Can you repeat that? I don't understand my kid. My teenage kid. I don't understand him. He doesn't listen to what I tell him. Sorry, sir. One more time. I don't understand him. He doesn't listen to what I say. Excuse me, sir. I thought in order to understand him, you should be listening. Who's supposed to listen to who to understand who? You get me? We think he should listen to me, and he should, and he should, and he should, and I just don't understand it. I gave him the perfect set of glasses. I told him exactly what the problem was. I don't get this kid. Well, maybe the problem is, is that you didn't take time to listen to him and see what's really going on in his life. What we need to do, people, the key in listening is not a technique, is not rephrase with these words, is not ask funny questions in an insincere way. The key, again, just like I've been saying the whole time, is not an outside, is an inside. Is the intent to understand. What I'm talking about here today is approaching my relationships. Before I'm ready to give, I need to be ready to listen and understand and not do, I don't stop listening until I understand look what it says chapter 5 verse 10 through 12 be steadfast in thy understanding and let thy word be the same be swift to hear and let thy life be sincere and with patience give answer if thou hast understanding answer thy neighbor here's good advice for all the parents spouses friends bosses whatever if not, meaning if you have no understanding, lay thy hand upon thy mouth. What does lay thy hand upon thy mouth mean? That's old English for shut your mouth. Communication, conversation, isn't just for me to express what I want to express and then just wait for you to stop talking so I can continue expressing and communicating. We need to change the way we think here. And I need to be in front of you. And my goal is not just to hear the words that come out of your mouth, but to see the feelings that are going inside your heart. To understand the background that has gotten you to this point. The goal of understanding is that I can stand in your shoes and see the way you see. And what's going to happen when you can do that? I said in the beginning, the goal is seek first to understand and then be understood. What you're going to notice is when you're able to deeply understand a person and understand what they're trying to say and why they're trying to say it, then you have a message to communicate, it becomes easy. It becomes easy because you understand them and you understand their frame of reference. You understand the shoes that they're walking in and once you do that, then it comes back to bless you in the end. because they'll understand you. Again, another example. To show you how to make this... 
I want to make it practical, but I don't want to tell you techniques. Because like I said, this is not, we're not in some self-help seminar. It's not techniques. It's not, I'm saying, ask this. It's not that. It's about the desire of your heart and the intention that's inside you and what you're trying to get out of this conversation. Young boy comes home after a soccer game and he's upset. This was his first soccer game. He was so excited. He'd been practicing. He got his new cleats. He's all excited. And he's upset. Dad, I don't want to play soccer anymore. I'm done with soccer. Why, son? What happened? Uh, soccer is boring. If I am this, I say, no, it's not boring. What you need to do is practice harder and, 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 and try your best to, to smile more and, and, and whatever. Try harder. That's the solution. Have a more positive attitude. And the kids, ah, but I just don't. No, no, no. You need to try it. Let's go get a goal. Let's go out back and let's practice having fun playing soccer right now. What have I done to this child? I've taken his feelings and what's inside him and said, be quiet and just wear the glasses. What's the right way? Dad, I'm done with soccer. It's boring. Realize when the kid comes and says, Dad, I'm done with soccer, it's boring. What is the child doing? What is he doing? He's reaching out. He's trying to open up. He's trying to get someone to help me. He's saying, Dad, I want your help. I need your help with something. Okay, son. What's wrong? What happened? Soccer's boring. I don't like soccer. Why? Where did this come from? I understand that you don't like it. And I understand that's how you feel, but explain to me why. And then what you see is that maybe something happened that made the child. The issue is not the soccer. The issue is, Dad, I feel worthless because I'm the worst guy on the team. You see what I'm saying? Man, it's got nothing to do with soccer. This is self-esteem. This is self-confidence. This is a, a child who's saying, I feel like I have no value in life. Why? Because I played this and I don't get goal and the other kids go and they take the ball from me and all that kind of stuff. The answer is not go try harder. The answer is no, you are worthwhile. And no, you do have value. And no, you're the most important person, the most special person in the whole wide world. You understand what I'm saying? It's not a technique. Okay? It's not a technique. It's, a, it's a inside your heart trying to get to what's the root of the matter right here. So our solution for this problem that we are going to set out on a mission today okay and trust me like I said you practice it you'll see the results is seek to understand before being understood book of James chapter 1 verse 19 tells us so then my beloved brethren let every man be swift to hear slow to speak slow to wrath when someone comes and talks to me and I'm trying to communicate before I try to communicate this I'm trying to receive this. You got me? Before I try to give this, I got something in my mind I'm trying to give. Before I seek to give, I'm seeking to take. Seeking to understand. And I'm not, like the son of Sirach told us, not going to open this boy until this guy and this guy understands what's going on inside there. Trust me, you make that your goal, you will see instant results. Often, because we're short-term thinking and we don't understand the problem, Again, back to my soccer example. I want my kid to play soccer and I just want him to be on the soccer field. And my goal is just an outside thing. Look, I can convince my kid to play soccer by giving him cash, by bribing him with something. I could, I could convince you whatever I want by nagging you to death. But that's not solving the problem. What solves the problem is when even sometimes I don't get what I want on the outside, but I seek to understand on the inside. Remember what we said before. Life is not about accomplishing stuff. It's about relationships, right? So if life is about relationships, then you can take these miscommunications or this, this problems that people have inside and it can build your relationship by understanding them at a deeper level. As I stand here today, and I'm sure as you sit there, some of the best relationship building moments in my life that have really bonded me 
with friends and family of mine have come directly from bad stuff. From a bad here or a bad there. Where someone felt some way, some way and was hurt and was this and was that. And because we sought to understand a person, then it used actually was used as something to lift our relationship even deeper. And it can be the same thing in your relationships in life when you have this mindset as well. Remember last week I told you about the bank account, right? The emotional bank account. How everyone has an emotional bank account and you are constantly making withdrawals and deposits in people's bank accounts consciously or subconsciously whether you realize it or don't realize it. If you want to go make a huge Bill Gates sized deposit in someone's bank account, the number one thing you do is understanding. Understanding a person is a big fat deposit in their emotional bank account. And the same way it's a bank account deposit, the glasses are one of the biggest withdrawals you can make. Just like Dr. Peter found out here today, he made a huge withdrawal by just giving the glasses. So what we're going to do here today, our action item for today, is we get rid of those glasses. No more glasses. No more do I assume anything about anyone. No matter what I've gone through or what I've seen, I don't assume that you have had the same background as me or that you've gone through the same experiences as me and I'm dealing with you individually to try to understand you. Psalm 139. Okay, it came as a quiet time a couple days back. King David understood this and teaches us this. Look what King David is saying. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O oh Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge, oh my goodness, is too wonderful for me. Do you understand what King David is saying? Like, if you can jump into these words... And you can imagine that the King of Kings, that God Almighty, knows you and understands you this well. That's what King David is saying. You know me inside and outside. You search me, you know, when I sit down, when I rise up. You know everything about me. Before something comes here, you know it. And how does that make you feel, King David, to be so well understood that someone understands you at that deep level? Ah, oh, too good. Too wonderful for me. All of us have that need to be understood. All of us have that need to be known. And maybe it's time that we start being the understander and being the knower for someone else. Because like I said, when you do that, you give them air to breathe. When you do that, you give them a ground to walk on. You provide them a chance to feel understood, validated, respected, whatever it is that may be. The worst feeling in the world, like I said, it feels like you're choking. Maybe some of you never had it, and I hope you never have it. But when you feel like no one gets it, like no one gets you, makes you feel like you're a crazy person and you belong in an asylum, we want to do the opposite. We want to help people to feel the opposite of that. So here's our to-do item. You're going to walk out of here and every person that you meet. And the closer the relationship, the more important it is. But like I said, it applies to everyone. Every relationship that you meet, you're going to put down your own glasses and you're going to try to see and sense and understand the other person. And if they come at you like this, before you come back out them like this, you try to understand why they're coming at me from the left side like that. If someone comes at me strong, before I respond strong, I try to understand. Too often we look at communication as a time for me to just say stuff. I want you to take it and see that communication is not a time for you to say stuff, but for you to understand stuff about the person that's in front of you, your wife, your kids, your friends, whatever. 
And like I said, who is going to be the ultimate beneficiary? When you understand someone better, who is the ultimate beneficiary? Is you. Because now that I understood you, and now that I understand how you think, and why you're thinking that way, then I can then communicate what I want very easily and very quickly. Instead of spending 10% of our time listening and 90% trying to beat it into your head, we're going to flip it. We're going to spend 90% of our time trying to understand and it's going to make the final 10% of communicating go much more smoothly. I want to leave you all here with a very nice prayer. Anyone knows St. Francis of Assisi? I'm sure you all heard of St. Francis. He was a Catholic saint. Those who went to Catholic school like myself, we used to pray this prayer every day. And it's a very, very, very nice prayer. Watch what he says. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me sow love. Where there's injury, pardon, doubt, faith, despair, hope, darkness, light, sadness, joy. Here comes the part I like. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. Habit number five, in a nutshell, summarized by this prayer is that we're leaving not the same way that we came. And we're going to leave and we're going to start planting these little seeds, these little habits, knowing that like we said at the beginning, that the more seeds we plant, it's going to bear fruit one day. And our seed that we're planting is not to be understood, but to understand. Not to be loved, but to love. And trust me, trust me, I dare anyone to take this mindset into your relationships this week Come back to me on Sunday next week and tell me that it didn't bear major fruit in your life. I dare anyone, I challenge you to do that and see. Let's stand up for a prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Lord, we thank you so much that you know us and you understand us. And even the deepest, deepest parts of me that, that even I myself don't understand, you know me so well. Lord, thank you that despite our many weaknesses and shortcomings, you still love us, care about us, and take care of us. Lord, please help us to remove the glasses that we've been seeing others with, to begin to understand people and to look at them from, from, from your perspective and, and to see all, all the things that, that we've been blinded to in the past. Lord, we know that, that we're the last people to judge anyone. So please, Lord, give us this, this non-judgmental, this non-critical mindset and let it really bear fruit in our relationships. Lord, we don't want to be frustrated with, with poor communication, especially in those close relationships. And you know about those, dear Lord, so we really pray for your divine hand inside of our hearts. We're not praying even that you change the other person. We're praying that you change us, Lord, that we may understand and care more about understanding than being understood. Bless each and every single person who's here this day. Put your hand upon them in a special way. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, with the intercessions and prayers of all of your saints. Hear us, Lord, as we pray thankfully. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, through Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.